So hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the types of power flow in the fluvial hydraulics uh, using HECRAS uh, 2D for flood modeling. So now let's get started. So uh, we're gonna take a look at the flow types in open channel. For example, we have two different types here. So the first type is the laminar flow and followed by the turbulent flow. So the type of flow can be classified based on the Reynolds number, for example, if the Reynolds number is less than 500, it is classified as a laminar flow and if the Reynolds number is greater than 500, it is called as a turbulent flow. And further, a turbulent flow can be uh, further uh, classified into a uh, subcritical flow, supercritical flow and critical flow based on the, the fruit number. So if the fruit number is less than 1, it is classified as subcritical flow and if the fruit number it is greater than 1, it is considered as a supercritical flow and if the fruit's number it is uh, equals to 1, it is called as a critical flow. And a possible difference between the laminar and the turbulent, uh, turbulent flow, so it can be given as here. So the laminar flow, so it is smooth, layered and uh, layered motion with no mixing. And the turbulent flow is chaotic, irregular motion with eddies. And based on the Reynolds number, the uh, laminar flow, the Reynolds number is less than 500. And in case of turbulent flow, the Reynolds number it is greater than 2000. And based on the velocity profile, a laminar flow is parabolic. And uh, in case of turbulent flow, it is a flattened uh, a uniform across the depth. So example of laminar flow is a groundwater flow and oil in a pipes. And uh, turbulent flow, it is river, waterfalls and spillway. And uh, laminar flow is a rare in nature and it occurs uh, in a very slow and viscous flow. And the turbulent flow dominates in river and engineering applications. And the, uh, these are the two major uh, flow types that is laminar flow and turbulent flow. So now uh, we're going to take a look at the subcritical versus supercritical flow which is uh, for the classification the turbulent flow. So uh, first the subcritical flow it is uh, slow deep flow and uh, downstream controlled and the supercritical flow is a fast shallow flow and upstream controlled and the fruits number in case of sub subcritical flow it is less than 1 and in case of supercritical flow the fruits number it is greater than 1 and uh, the wave behavior so in case of subcritical flow the wave propagates upstream and downstream and in case of uh, the wave behavior in supercritical flow, the waves uh, only moves downstream. And examples of the subcritical flow which includes uh, deep rivers, tidal estuaries and uh, examples of supercritical flow it includes rapids, hydraulic uh, jumps or steep shoots. So the three primary types of water flow in a river and streams are the laminar, turbulent and helical uh, flow. So on the significance and the, in the natural and engineering system as given below here. So the laminar flow, the water moves in smooth parallel layers with no mixing between them and dominated by a viscous force. So the characteristics of the laminar flow is the velocity profile is parabolic and the Reynolds number is greater than, it is uh, lesser than 500 and the occurrences is in, it is rare in nature and seen in the groundwater flow or the laboratory experiment with a very uh, slow flow. And next is a turbulent flow. So the water uh, moves uh, chaotically with eddies and uh, irregular mixing. So it is dominated by the inertial forces. So the characteristics of this turbulent flow, it includes the velocity profile is flattened. Uh, it is uniform across the depth due to the mixing. And the Reynolds number is greater than or equals to 2000. So it causes a high velocity and uh, rough channel beds and the obstructions. So the next uh, flow is a helical flow, a spiral motion of water combining the downstream flow with the rotational movement. So the common and meandering river. So it causes the channel curvature and outer banks uh, erodes and the inner bank deposits uh, sediments So the gravity and centrifugal force interaction. So it is primarily of gravity and centrifugal force interaction and the role in the sediment dynamics it includes uh, a fast uh, a deep flow on the outer banks which cause erosion and a slow shallow flow on the inner banks uh, which causes the deposition so the flow comparison so the flow type based on the laminar so the motion is a parallel layer 
and the Reynolds number is less than 500 and the occurrence in nature it is very rare and the key impact is a, a low energy loss and in case of turbulent it is chaotic eddies and the Reynolds number is greater than 2000 it is common in river erosion and the key impact it includes erosion and sediment transport and loss is the helical so it is spiral uh, downstream plus rotation and uh, natural occurrence it includes in uh, meandering river and the key impact it causes is the point bar formation so now let us take a look at the froth's number in open channel flow so the open channel flow uh, are classified into a subcritical critical and supercritical regimes based on the froth's number a dimensionless parameter that compares the inertial forces to the gravitational forces in the flowing water so the froth's number it determines whether the flow is dominated by gravity or the inertia so the gravity it is subcritical flow and inertia it is supercritical flow and the fruits number is a dimensionless number that compares the inertial force uh, that is the flow velocity with the gravitational force with the wave uh, so the wave celerity acting on the fluid so the formula is used to express is the fruits uh, equals to v uh, divided by the root of uh, g multiplying d so the v which means the uh, mean velocity of the flow of water in meter per second and the g is the acceleration due to gravity which is uh, 9.81 meter per second square and uh, the d is the hydraulic depth of the channel and uh, the a and the a is called as the cross sectional area of the flow in meter square and the t it is the top width of the water surface in meter so the hydraulic depth of the channel the d is equals to a by t and uh, this formula can also be written as uh, froth's equals to v square divided by g multiplying d so the flow classification based on the froth's number so the uh, subcritical flow if the fruit is, uh, froth's number is less than uh, 1 So the subcritical flow uh, is the fruits number is less than 1 so called the streaming flow and the flow is stable smooth and uh, controlled by the downstream condition. So the water velocity is lower than the surface waves so the waves can move upstream example is the deep slow moving river. And the next is the critical flow if the fruits number is equals to 1 so it represents an ideal balance between the inertial and gravitational forces. So the flow velocity equals the wave velocity. So the flow is in the transient, the transition state. Either it's clearly a transcule nor a turbulent. So example is a flow at the control section, like uh, the viewer's crust or the critical depth in the flumes. And the next uh, is a supercritical flow. If the flow's number it is greater than one, so also called as a shooting flow or the rapid flow. The flow is turbulent, unstable and controlled by the upstream conditions and the water velocity is greater than the wave velocity. So the waves cannot travel upstream, example is a steep mountain streams or a spillway dam outlets. So you can able to see the figures given here. So this is a subcritical flow and uh, the fraud number is less than 1 and the critical uh, flow is a froth's number is equals to 1 and supercritical flow with the froth's number is greater than 1 so you can able to see the figures here so the flow is most stable smooth and controlled by the downstream conditions and the flow velocity is a critical flow where the flow velocity is equals to the wave velocity and the subcritical flow is also called a shooting flow or the rapid flow so the flow is turbulent unstable and controlled by the upstream conditions so this table shows the subcritical flow, critical and supercritical flow based on the flow depth, velocity, controls, wave propagations and with the examples here. So the flow depth is subcritical is deep and critical is critical depth and the supercritical is shallow. And the velocity is slow in case of subcritical and uh, velocity is uh, critical velocity in case of critical and uh, fast in case of supercritical and the controls are given downstream, transitional and upstream an example it includes uh, Mississippi River and for case of supercritical is mountain streams so next uh, we're gonna talk about the shear stress so the shear stress is a fundamental concept in the fluid mechanics that describes the force exerted by the moving fluid parallel to the surface 
such as a riverbed or a channel. So the mechanism, it includes an open channel flow, the water moves downstream due to the gravity, creating a drag force along the bed and banks. And the erosion, when the shear stress exceeds the resistance of the bed material, so the particles are dislodged and transported. And the sediment transport, so the magnitude of this shear stress uh, determines whether the sediment remains stationary or moves as a bed load or a suspended load. So the factors which influence uh, influencing the shear stress, it includes the higher velocity increases the shear stress, deeper flow generally exerts a greater shear stress, and uh, steeper flow slopes enhances the gravitational forces which increase the shear stress. So next we're going to take a look at the uh, stream power. So the stream power quantifies the energy available in the flowing water to perform a geomorphic work such as sediment transport and channel modification. So uh, the definition, so stream power combines the shear stress and the flow velocity representing the rate of energy expenditure per unit channel length. So the significance of the stream power, uh, so sediment transport. So higher stream power increases the capacity of the river to erode and transmit sediment. And the second significance is the channel morphology. So it influences the formation of the features like meanders, braids and, uh, and uh, the riffle pool sequence. So it determines the extent of the sediment deposition during an overbank flows. So last uh, we're going to take a look at the relationship between the shear stress and the stream power. So while the shear stress describes the force acting on the bed, the stream power integrates this force with the flow velocity to measure the reverse ability to do, to do a work. And the high shear stress plus low velocity may move a coarse particle but uh, with a limited transport distance. So high shear stress plus uh, low velocity, so it, it may move a coarse particle but a limited transport distance. And high stream power. So it indicates a, a strong erosional uh, potential capable of transporting large sediments volume and reshaping the channels. So in this video we have uh, shown you the types of flows in fluvial hydraulics. Uh, so for HECRAS 2D flow modeling or uh, flood modeling. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and give us a like.